No. I have very little faith in the technology that's around my neck right now. Okay, so if it starts to squeak or squeal or get unique in any way, shape, or form, it's out of here. But hopefully you can hear me at this moment in time. Currently, at this moment? Well, good. At this moment, I would invite you all to quiet your hearts and minds as we enter into the presence of the Lord. present with us today. May our worship of you be pure in intention, certain in purpose, and be truly from the heart. We pray this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Welcome to the fourth Sunday of Advent. Please turn to number 56 in your blue <coughs> hymnal, number 56, as we sing verses 7 and 8 of O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, verses 7 and 8.
penitential order right one begins on page 319 in the red book of common prayer page 319 in the middle of the page bless the lord who forgiveth all our sins Turning to page 317, the Decalogue. God spake these words and said, I am the Lord thy God, who brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have none other gods but me. Lord, have Thou shalt not take, thou shalt not make to thyself any graven image, nor the likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or in the earth beneath, or in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down to them, nor worship them. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Remember that thou keep holy the Sabbath day. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Honor thy father and thy mother. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt do no murder. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not steal. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not covet. Lord, have mercy upon us, and write all these thy laws in our hearts. At the bottom of page 319, hear what our Lord Jesus Christ said. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. The Apostle John tells us, if we say we have no sins, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. The writer to the Hebrews adds, Seeing that we have a great high priest that has passed into the heavens, Jesus the Son of God, let us come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Kneeling, let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Let's spend a moment or two in personal confession and reflection before we continue with our public corporate confession. At the bottom of page 320, together, all the mighty and most merciful Father, we have erred straight from our ways and our thoughts to you. We have followed too much to the vices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against our holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done. And we have done those things which we ought not to have done. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare thou those who confess her 
Lord, grant you absolution and remission of all your sins, true repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and consolation of his Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Turning to page 324. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy on us. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. We beseech thee, Almighty God, to purify our consciences by thy daily visitation, that when thy Son, our Lord, cometh, he shall find in us a mansion prepared for himself through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated and attentive to the reading of God's Word. Pat? Thank you. Um, somebody can read the writing of the read? Oh, oh, we got that. Lorenzo, we got that. Why do we light the Advent candles? Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He who follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. What is the meaning of the fourth lighted candle? The fourth lighted candle represents the angels who announce the good news of light to a darkened world. The angels were created by God to fill his heavenly court with the praise of his name. They devote themselves to serving God in heaven by delighting to do his will. God also uses them as messengers of his good news to men and women on earth. Luke writes, And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have given your only begotten Son to take our nature upon him and to be born of a pure virgin. Grant that we, who have been born again and made your children by adoption and grace, may daily be renewed by your Holy Spirit, through our Lord Jesus Christ, to whom with you and the same Spirit be honor and glory, now and
first lesson comes from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 7, verse 10 through 16. The reading can be found in our online bulletin or your personal Bible. A reading from Isaiah. Again, the Lord spoke to Ahaz, saying, Ask for a sign of the Lord your God. Let it be deep as Sheol, and for as high as heaven. But Ahaz said, I will not ask, and I will not put the Lord to the test. Then Isaiah said, Hear then, O house of David, is it too little for you? Is it too little for you to worry mortals that you worry my God also? <clears throat> Therefore, the Lord Himself will give you a sign. Look, the young woman is with child and shall bear a son, and shall name him Emmanuel. He shall eat curds and honey by the time he knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good. For before the child knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good, the land before whose two kings you are in dread will be deserted. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed today is Psalm 80, verses 1 through 7 and 16 through 18. The psalm is found on page 702 of the Book of Common Prayer. Let us pray Psalm 80, verses 1 through 7, 16 through 18, responsibly by whole verse. I will begin. Hear, O shepherd of Israel, leading Joseph like a flock, shine forth you that are enthroned upon the cherub. Restore us, O God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. You have fed them with the bread of tears. You have given them bowls of tears to drink. Restore us, O God of hosts, and show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. Continuing in verse 16. And so we will never turn away from you. Give us life that we may call upon your name. Our second lesson comes from the letter to the church in Rome, chapter 1, verses 1 through 17. The reading can be found in our online bulletin or your personal Bibles. A reading from Romans. Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, set apart for the gospel of God, which he promised beforehand through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures. The gospel concerning his son, who was descended from David according to the flesh, and was declared to be the son of God, with power according to the spirit of holiness by resurrection from the dead, Jesus Christ our Lord through whom we have received grace and apostleship to bring about the obedience of faith among all the Gentiles for the sake of his name, including yourselves, who are called to belong to Jesus Christ. To all God's beloved in Rome who are called to be saints, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be If you are able, please stand. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. 
Glory to the Lord. Now the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they had were living together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She shall bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin will conceive and bear a son, and they will name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke from the dream, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took her as his wife, but they had no marital relations with her until she had borne a son, and he named him Jesus. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise you. Please pray with and for me. In the words of my mouth, in the meditation of all our hearts, be acceptable to you, Father God, our Savior and Redeemer. Lord, may only your words be spoken and your words heard. In this we pray in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Can I get the young ones to come on down? Only a couple of you. And if you are not necessarily young, but young in heart, come on down because we've got a caravan that's down here at the front that needs to move a little bit closer to the nativity scene. So anybody who would like to help, get up, come forward, and grab some of the caravan characters, and we're going to move them over here to the side. So... It takes a whole lot of people to get a caravan going. Just move, we're lining up right over there. Oh, just, Audrey, just, just grab what you got. <laughs> you forgot your cane again. Yeah, and she oh, forgot her yes. <laughs> Four weeks out of surgery, that's what it is. represents the church. So y'all are looking really good. (laughs) 
As I was preparing for this message, it dawned on me that my opening would sound very familiar, and as a matter of fact, it was probably very repetitive. And I was thinking, well, what better way could I open it? And it dawned on me, sometimes we need to say the same things over and over again so that they actually take root. And so it goes like this. Man, we are in a mess out there today, aren't we? Yeah. Right? Can you imagine a time when the world was more confused and more divided than it is today? If we take a look outside the walls and turn on the television set, there is very little upon which people agree upon. We are divided one side from the other. We've got the East versus the West. We've got the North versus the South. We've got the young versus the old. And nobody can come together to get anything done in the world. We can't figure out what to do along our border. We can't figure out what to do in overseas. A lot of times we can't figure out what to get done in our own household. So the cry, O come, O come, Emmanuel, should be the cry of all of our hearts. But lest you think that we are in a very unique situation, as the teacher says in the class, the Ecclesiastes, there is nothing new under the sun. What has been done before is being done again. And as Isaiah was talking to the people of Israel when this was recorded, they had been dispersed, they had been beaten up, they had been put down, and they were looking for a word of hope for something to hang their hats on to know that God had not abandoned them. It's the same kind of despair that we have today. So he tells them that the Lord has told him, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Look, a young woman is with child and will bear a son and shall name him Emmanuel. Now, while they, like us, would have been thinking that that prophecy was going to be filled immediately, it did take a little bit of time for all of the circumstances to be bad enough so that they would appreciate what he was talking about for Emmanuel to come. And it did come. First century Israel was still being oppressed. They still couldn't figure out what was going on. There were Pharisees who were preparing for his coming by enforcing purity rules and regulations. There were zealots who thought the only way that they could get their job done was by overthrowing the government. There were Essenes. There was a group of people who decided that they were going to completely uh, separate themselves and they went off and lived in the desert. Nobody could figure out what they needed to do to prepare the way for the Lord. And then you had this guy by the name of John. Y'all remember John the Baptist? Right? Hairy looking dude. Camel coat. Leather vest. Eating curds. Honey. Wild locusts, milk, who was saying, This is what you need to do to prepare the way for the Lord. And he got everybody to get down on their knees and repent of their sins because that is the way that you need to prepare. His cry, Oh, come. O come, Emmanuel, meaning God with us, saying that he is going to come and lead us the direction that we need to go. But Emmanuel means more than God is with us. It means that God is for us. 
And in our lives today, we definitely need God to be with us, do we not? Right? We need to be God to be on the right side and on the left side and on the front. We need him completely surrounding us so that we are going where God leads. But I want to go where God leads. I don't necessarily want God to go where I am leading, particularly if I'm going the wrong direction. I want him to put a big wall in my path so I don't go that direction. There's a church here in town whose tagline is God is for you. God is on your side. Mm -hmm. God is on. Doesn't that sound good? It does. It sounds really good. God is on my side. So even if I'm running off a cliff, God is on my side. Even if I'm heading down the wrong direction, God is on my side. I don't necessarily want God to be on my side if I'm doing something stupid. I want God to be in front of me and stop me and with me so that I won't do that. I want God to be the leader. But if God is for us, that means that he wants the best for us. He wants us to have what he wants us to have. He wants us to proper in the, prosper in the way that he wants us to prosper. He wants us to grow in the way that we should be growing. He's not looking to do us harm. He's not looking to do us evil. He's not looking to tempt us to hope to trip us up so that we would fall and for him to, to laugh at us. No, God is for us. And because he is for us and wants to have a relationship with us, he sent his son to redeem us. He sent his son to show us the way of love. He sent us his son to show us the way of love of peace. That's what God being for us means. That's what God being with us means. So in our world today, in our life today, when we can't find any division, when we can't find any peace, when we can't find any love, when we are prostrate on the ground and knowing not knowing where to go, that is when we should be crying out. That is when we should be singing the hymn. That's when we should be laying our hearts open. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel. I'm Israel. I'm that soul that has wandered off. I'm that person who has sought the devices and desires of my own heart, just as Israel had done. I'm the people that Isaiah is speaking to, and I need that assurance that comes from a virgin, a young lady, who surrendered herself and her will to her Lord and Father God to give birth to a child named Jesus. O come, O come, Emmanuel. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Turning to page 326 in the Book of Common Prayer, page 326. 
Let us stand and affirm what we know to be true is written for us in the ancient <coughs> words of the Nicene Creed. When I ask you, my brothers and sisters, what do you believe? Together, we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one indeed with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified on the conscious side. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. If you are able, let us kneel and pray for the whole state of Christ's church and the world. The prayers of the people for the Advent season are formed for and can be found on page 388 in the Book of Common Prayer. Let us pray for the church and for the world. We pray especially for Michael Curry, our presiding bishop, Michael Hahn and Jerry Lamb, our bishops, and Daniel and Scott, our priests. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. We pray especially for Joe, our president, and Michelle and Greg, our governors. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them to the joy of your salvation. Today we pray for Jenny, Dennis, David, Ciara, Vincent L., Seth, Keith, Glenn, Jane, Charlie, Audrey, Estella, the Reverend Dr. Lesbier Fairfield, 
Sean G, Pat Rose, and Thomas Powers. In the church's weekly cycle of prayer, we pray for Grace House in Carlsbad, Bad, and Melissa Roberts, the director at, at Assurance Home in Roswell. In repose, Amy. We pray for our military, both home and abroad, all in law enforcement, firefighters and first responders, health care professionals, educators, and students. We pray for those affected by violence, brokenness, and all manners of illness and disease around the world. Please add your own intercessions and thanksgiving, either silently or aloud. Pray for those along our borders on either side of the river. For peace, comfort, grace, and mercy. Pray for those who are lonely during this season. Let us reach out to them and see if they're okay. We ask this. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We also pray for those who are going through this season for the first time without a loved one. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. O Lord, our God, accept the fervent prayers of the people. In the multitude of your mercy, Look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls. And to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. My brothers and sisters, please stand. <coughs> The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Please share that peace with those closest to you. Have a seat. There are a number of announcements in the bulletin. Uh, the one that is most pressing to this congregation is there will be a service next Sunday morning. That is Christmas Day. Because I've come to find out that there are some churches that don't do a Christmas Day service. And I'm going, well, what are you going to do on Sunday? Well, we don't have a Christmas Day service. We're having a Christmas Day service, regular time here next Sunday. Um, it has been pressed upon the members of the vestry and on the rector that it helps from time to time to let the congregation know the kind of outreach and goodwill that you support. And I'm happy to report and let you know that over this, Chris, this Advent season, that we have, in one way or another, mightily impacted the lives of 45 families in our area. 45 families that would not have had rent 
paid, that would not have had utilities paid, that would not have had food in their in their refrigerators, or a reason to get up and rejoice on Christmas morning. And so for the blessings that you have shared with this community, I want to say amen and thank you. And if y'all want to give yourselves a round of applause, I don't think that would be important. <laughs> As good as that is, there is much more that we can do. Uh, it has also been pressed upon me that there are members of the congregation, both here and out in the internet land, that have had a heart burning for the situation that is happening in El Paso. If you have a desire to impact them in some positive fashion, see me because we have been in contact with a number of organizations that are trying to help with the humanitarian crisis that our government has created. Did I catch both sides of that well? <laughs> okay. We did not create it, and it's not going away anytime soon. But there are children of God who need help. And that is what we are called to help for the children. While those elsewhere contend with the larger underlying issues. So if you have a desire, please see me because I've got some information to pass on to you. In addition to all the people that we've been helping, we're also helping a whole lot of pets. The back of the van is filled with food, and we're going to be taking it down to the local shelter, so the pets will have a good something to eat as well. So just to let you know that we're doing as much as we can for as many as we can. Um, Along those same lines, I'd like to personally thank Lori and Lorenzo and Sandra for yesterday. Um, Instead of having the family dinner that we usually have, things kind of got away from people this year and, and people weren't in charge of stuff. So they took it on themselves to um, go down, shop for, find families in our area that needed help with Christmas, then shop for these kids, um, have them here yesterday um, shopping at the barn, uh, wrapping their gifts for them, giving them food, they gave them buckets of uh, like Christmas dinner in a, in a dinner big tub. Um, and it was just a really great thing to see, and it was all them. Uh, they, they just went crazy with it, and I'd like to thank you for, for being that outreach for us this year. When you get to the discretionary fund and the outreach fund, that's the kind of stuff that happens with those funds. We're always in need of more so that we can do more. Um, a number of you remember uh, Joanne and Thomas Powers. And you're going, Thomas Powers, that name sounds familiar. He was a gentleman that was about this tall and about this wide and had a beard down to here. And he was the blacksmith that often came to our country fair. And he loved to read from the King James Version because that was the only authorized version of Scripture. When he read on Saturday and Sunday, you could tell that he was reading from the heart like he knew the story well. well we got an email from him today because he, uh, he was here until his job here in it, and then he moved back home to Socorro where he goes to Epiphany. But we still are in irregular contact with him. Well, he sent this howdy to my other church family. Long and short of it is, please tell everyone that yes, I have terminal brain cancer and it's all okay. I may never have to fill out another tax form again.
Yesterday was my mother's birthday. And I know I'm not the only one who is walking through the season missing someone they love. Because it happens every year. And it happens across the world. So it is important for us to remember that as a family we are responsible for each other, that we need to reach out and talk to one another, we need to care for one another, we need to extend grace and mercy to one another in a season where things can get really confused and really off kilter, particularly if we are not keeping our eye and our heart on Christ. Because I can think in this congregation there's probably four or five other members of the congregation who are going through their first Christmas, their first New Year's, absent a mother, a father, a sister, a husband, a wife. So I'm asking that you allow the Holy Spirit to move in your lives to pray for them, to pray for us. And as I've said so often today, O come, O come, Emmanuel, so that we can rejoice, rejoice, as Emmanuel's come to ransom. Now, it's hard to go from that to birthdays and anniversaries, but I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> you need to announce the opposite. Um, at the week after Christmas, Lorenzo is going to be taking some much-needed time off. The office is going to be closed Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday next week. Okay, That does not mean that in the case of an emergency, you can't call. What that does mean is, is if you come by the church, you might not find it as open as you would in the past. For Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Thank you. Is there anything else on that list I needed to remember? Um, no, but if there's any bits remembers, I'd like to speak to you after um, after service, just for a brief time. I need to get approval from somebody. We got another outreach opportunity that requires some vestry forethought. Okay. Birthdays and anniversaries. Yay. Yay! Come on down! Bring them! Bring them! We, we need to end this on a better note. Come on down! I drove a long way it's just for my breakfast. <laughs> yes, but you're walking down here by yourself. That's unacceptable. <laughs> Pat? She has breakfast. Oh! Yes, you're standing and sitting there by yourself. That does not work that way. Okay. Sherry? Yes. Is it a birthday or an anniversary? It's a birthday. Okay, then why are your sisters sitting by themselves in the pew? You'd have thought after I called them out, you knew you were going to get caught. Come on down. Okay. Uh, we'll start down on this end. So who's having a birthday? Okay, I'm having a birthday. Okay, so who are you? Sherry. Everybody say hi, Sherry. Hi, Sherry. Okay, and who are these lovely ladies with you? My sister, Kim, and Roxy. And your sister, Kim. Everybody say hi, Kim. Hi, hi Kim. Kim. Hi, Roxy. Hi, Roxy. Okay, so you are obviously sisters because it is so evident, but what is not so is the order of birth. Who's what and where? I'm the oldest. No. <laughs> I am. <laughs> if you're the oldest, do you mind sharing how much more maturity you have over your siblings? Uh, I'm 72. 72. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Just remember your times. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm not <getting> <laughs> Okay, and what do we have here? Birthday, and who are you? Sharon Passantino. Everybody say hi, Sharon. Hi, Sharon. Okay, who's this with you? My husband, 
Ja, Joseph. Joseph. <laughs> Let me guess, you know, those Christmas ads where they're saying that we buy each other cars for Christmas uh, is happening on this birthday, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so do you mind sharing how old you are with us? 67. 67, a round of applause. And coming down to the far end, folks, we haven't seen for a minute or two. Mm -hmm. Okay, who's having a birthday? Well, mine was December 6th. And December, mine is December 20th. December 6th. Oh, so we're, so we're catching up for lost time, right? Yeah. 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 Yes, in December 20th in a couple of days. Right. Okay, so who are you? Pat. Everybody say hi, Pat. Hi, Pat. And who are you? Ron Bart. Everybody say hi, Ron. Hi, Ron. Now, you don't see them as often as because they are true full-time RVers. You know, they live in a really nice portable house, right? So how long are you going to be down in this neck of the woods? Just leave on January 3rd again. January 3rd. Oh, so you'll be here for Christmas. Christmas. Yes, and yes, Christmas. Yeah, yeah. Good. 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 And you're both 68. Oh, how did that work out? I'm the older woman. She's two weeks older than you. <laughs> yeah, we're not even going to go there. May I, may I say something additional? You may say something additional. I've been chasing my 68th birthday for 33 years because I'm now officially older than my dad was when he died. Oh, oh ooh, yeah. Yeah, and that, and that, uh, that gives you something to pause about. Yeah, it was, it was a life changing experience. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Amen. 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 All right. Glad you caught him. Glad you passed him. Glad you all are here with us as we turn to page 830 in the Book of Common Prayer. Y'all get together and hold each other. Page 830, we're going to pray the plural version of prayer 51. Together. Watch over thy children, O Lord, as their days increase. As they them wherever they may be. Strengthen them and Cover them and in their hearts may thy peace which passes understanding abide all the days of their lives through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks and grace for all these children. We thank you for the milestones that they have reached and are celebrating with us this day. We pray that you would put a hedge of protection around each and every one of them so that they may not turn to the right or to the left, and that any attacks of the enemy may not succeed. <coughs> Pour out your beloved blessings upon each and every one of them, and we pray this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. And a round of applause. And I was thinking of your mother all day yesterday, because we shared the same birthday. Yes. Mm -hmm. thank, thank you, thank you, thank you. Guess who else I've seen this congregation today? Oh, yes. The prodigal daughter. Uh, yeah, the prodigal daughter and eternal college students in Canberra. Yeah, she's not her own. I'm, I'm working up to she's that old. <laughs> <laughs> right? Uh, Glenn Green is in the back. Uh, Glenn comes to us. She's a CEO for good reason because she lives in <laughs> Kansas City, Missouri. Kansas City, Missouri. And she comes back whenever she can. And she always has her assigned pew in the back of the church. I want to the time. Yes. Yeah, we've been praying for we've been praying for your healing, but it's good to have you back. How long are you going to be here? Just a week. Okay, so you leave like right after New Year's. Oh, it's this week. Not that. Welcome back. Lovely to have you. Um, yes, Pat. I want to thank everyone. I am healed and rose from her lips. Amen. 
Our prayers work. Right? Audrey is four weeks outside of total knee replacement surgery, and she's walking around without a cane, much to the chagrin of all of those who know what it's about. Glenn is healing quite nicely. The Lord answers prayer. My brothers and sisters, walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us in offering and sacrifice to God. Um, the song that we've chosen for today is a true offertory. Um, so just sit back and listen and enjoy it. Make the same mistake before. Too many miles, too many stores. Assemble the traffic, the Christmas rush. It breaks me till I push and shove. And children are crying while mothers are trying to photograph Santa and sleigh. Shopping and buying and standing forever in time. What can I say? I
be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is very neat, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Everlasting God, because thou didst send thy beloved Son to redeem us from sin and death, to make us heirs in him of everlasting life. And when he shall come again in power and great triumph to judge the world, we may without shame or fear rejoice to behold his appearing. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, together, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord, most high. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. You may kneel or remain standing. <coughs> All glory be to thee, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, for that thou, thy tender mercy, didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there, by his one oblation of himself once offered, a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world. And in institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue our perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, we, thy humble servants, do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty with these thy holy gifts which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make. Having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and of thy almighty goodness, vouchsafe to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we, receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins 
and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee. Humbly beseeching thee that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him. And although we are unworthy for our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this, our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And give us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lamb of God, that taketh away the sins of the world, O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, grant us thy peace. On page 337, together. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy neck, O very mercies. We are not worthy of so much as we have our comes to the next table, but that thou art seen, O Lord, and thou art brought along with the law of the first members. Grant us, therefore, gracious grace, O Lord, so as we may eat the flesh by the dear Son of Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood. That we may ever more love in him and be in us. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God, take the remembering that Jesus Christ died for you, and be on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. The table of our Lord Jesus Christ has been set. He is our host, we are his guest. This table is open to any who are hungry, all who are thirsty. For everyone who needs the grace of this season, please come forward to the table.
page 339. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost be upon you this day and always. Amen. Please stand for our processional processional hymn.
house. There's a place for me. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. Sisters, let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Thanks, Thanks be God. God. Amen. Amen. Amen.